talk about that right now. Okay, so anyway, love to my boy, um, David, and uh, rest in peace. Okay, so anyway, guys, I'm going to have enter... I was going to say the dungeon. No, this is not a dungeon, okay? <laughs> this is anything but the lyric B. We will go ahead and let you into the party, okay? So we can have a little fun with you. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to play my theme music or whatever as you try to get up in here, okay? Hold on. Get you up in here. Ah, there we go. It takes me a little while to figure that part out, but I got you, lyric. Come on, baby. Paris, thank you, my love. Um, so yeah, so guys, I hope you are getting ready for an amazing interview. Oh, what you doing with the red cup? Wait, I've been waiting. Okay, wait a second. You I know it's always a party. great time for having something in the cup, but it's like, you what time the party early, huh? Uh, it's not early. It's noon, but you didn't let me in the party early, so I had to get ready in the car. Okay, okay. Well, it is noon out there, so I'll let you slide. Yeah, whenever it's noon or whatever. Yeah, it's 5 p.m. somewhere. Say what? It's 5 p.m. somewhere yeah. else. So, you know, it just depends on where you are in the world. Well, you know what? I'll say this. Nobody knows what's really in this cup. So, cheers. Amen. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do it in the South. Sometimes we put a little extra something up in there. It might be Bailey's. It might be something else. So, you know, nobody knows. Oh, we're going to get into it. What part of Louisiana are you from? Because, you know, I, I used to stay out in Lake Charles. Are you serious? For some time. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, so if you were Lake Charles, you're going to go ahead, go east on I-10. They say the 10 out here. I'm like, no, it's I-10. And then you're going to go south once you get to um, Opelousas. So I'm in uh, past Lafayette. Past Lafayette. Past Lafayette. Okay, so, so a little closer to the south or whatever. Not quite on the coast, but not too far. But yes, someone said Maurice, Maurice, Louisiana. But I figured you didn't know about no Maurice, Louisiana, so I would say Lafayette. Well, in past, and see, at that time, I was still taking Greyhound. So in passing, yes. Yes. I know. Maurice. Yeah. So you probably like, wave, okay, all right, cool. If you would have taken a little turn off of that uh, exit, you would have got some good food in. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Did you say fried boot ass? See, my girl, that's <laughs> tough. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I said it, but you said it right. Because some people say Bowden. I'm like, oh, my God, no. Boot ass. And they're like, Bow Bowden. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, we'll get to why I can say it so well. Because I'm originally from Wisconsin, racing Wisconsin to be exact. I moved to Atlanta when I was in the fifth grade, and um, I've been here ever since. I moved around some time, you know, but uh, yeah, I stayed in Lake Charles for some time with my ex fiance. Really? Mm -hmm. Good old Lake Charles. There's not much to do in Lake Charles other than gamble. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Good family. Oh, okay. okay. Well, well, family trumps everything, okay? So even if it's boring as hell, as long as you got your family. And what do we say out here? Food, family, and fun. That's it. As long as you got that, you're good. That's right. Yeah. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very well. Yeah. I'm excited to be here. Very you proper. Know, I was going to say, you said very well. Every single time my daughter catches us, you know, how, how was your day? Good. Mom, no, it's not good. Okay, I'm doing well. Huh? See, I don't have any children, um, but I have a niece, my younger sister. She and I look alike. We have really strong genes, and so she had her first daughter at 16, so her baby was our baby, Aww. but I call her twin. <laughs> and um, when she says good, I, I do a quick look, and she'd be like... <laughs> See, <laughs> so you're from Wisconsin, so you got a little properness to you, okay? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, and it switches up. You know, when I'm drinking, I get a New York accent. And then, um, you know, sometimes when I'm hanging around friends, because I've been out here so long, you know, I, I can switch it up. We're going to get into some acting soon. I got to learn from you. I've been watching your face expressions. Well, you have been in Atlanta for how long now? Jesus. Life. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Atlanta unto itself or whatever is like Black Hollywood. So everybody is like mm -hmm. a... Singer, songwriter, actor, model, uh, what do you call it, influencer. Like, everybody in Atlanta's got, like, five different titles. So, it's like a whole, like, conglomerate of us or whatever that out there pounding pavement and making it happen. Yeah. 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 But you certified, you 
know, there's a, there's a difference from you know, being self-certified and being certified. You are of the arts. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Why well, try? You know, I just kind of fell into this business or whatever. I'm just like, okay, the Lord put me here for something. I don't know exactly what, but here we are. Look, almost 20 yeah, years yeah. later, which I can't believe that, here we are. That's right. Yeah, so, do, I mean, do you do I'm the so acting good. thing, or are you strictly a uh, singer-songwriter? Um, I haven't been doing it professionally. You know, I was the best being in high school, so I, I did everything. That was something I got to put on my graduating certificate. But, uh, no, after that, I haven't gotten any roles. And truthfully, to be honest with you, people don't really take me serious as an actor. Like, I know a lot of film directors. People know me for music. Right. They know me for singing. My name is lyric which means words to a song um and you know doing radio and stuff like that so whenever i try to go audition i'll never forget um god rest his soul um he played uh what is it tommy on martin but oh, i know i used to yes. see him. he was amazing i actually yeah. worked with him one time yeah um it was a, it was kind of like a stage play or whatever but yeah he was like my ex-husband yeah were you like, <laughs> <laughs> you're not just so many gigs or whatever. I'm just like, wait, Tommy Ford, Tommy Ford. Well, but I used to see him around a lot. You know, I was always that young guy. I started out when I was 16 being out here. I, I fell into the hands of a radio personality um, that I knew out here. And uh, she was working at 89.3 FM. And so uh, she used to have this little showcase around town, but you had to be 18 and older to get in the club. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's very easy if you go to, like, College Park to get the fake ID. Uh -huh. So I would get in the club at 16, uh -huh. and uh, I was just that little guy with the long hair running around here singing at everybody's event. I got to um, open up for the Franchise Boys and uh, DJ Unk and um, Robin La Jolla. No, she's uh, Ray Charles' daughter, uh -huh. one of his children. Uh -huh. And so I got to work with a lot of people. And around that time, I remember I would see Tommy at like three events in the week. Oh, and there was this wow. one time. I keep calling him Tommy. I'm sorry. Uh, well, that, what, that, that was it. Tommy Ford, no? Is it? Okay. Well, I'm thinking of Martin, so I could be off. Well, well, I, maybe that was his Martin name. Oh, God. No, I'm not. I'm confused. I don't know. I call him Tommy Ford. Somebody out there, whatever that's watching right now, let us know what his real name is. Because I'm like, ah! Oh! Cause yeah, he was Tommy to everybody. So, but do you used well, to point I was trying to do is that when I went to go audition for a role on Saturday, I thought I was like in good standing because I had seen him at like three events I was performing. And I walked in, he was like, "Lyric, what you doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> and I have friends like that now, so I think I just need to, you know, put it out there and just focus more on that. Well, it is hard to cross well, over because it's true. Once you've established yourself as one thing or whatever, like, oh, Lord, here he goes trying to add another, you know, item to his name, to his list. So, yeah, but it takes time. It takes so much time. But it's all good. You're in the right place or whatever. If you do want to transition, it'll happen. So, um, let me see. It's Thomas but Tommy to people. Okay, so, yeah, Thomas Ford. I think so. Yeah. I guess, I'm, like, I'm, I'm really it's, good on it's it. early. I I'm so good on that because, you know, I come from the world of, radio and fm radio at that so i'm i just did not want to mess that up i appreciate that kid. yeah yeah folks come to our like if you throw it out there or whatever our, our audience will will provide so thank you so much for coming through on that but okay before we get to the meat of the matter or like the good stuff or whatever that you got going on and there is a big announcement that we will definitely get, yes that we'll get to before the end of the show but you, as a young man, I'm looking at you right now. I don't know if you moisturize really good or what, but you seem like a baby, okay? And I'm like, you have been through a lot. Like, your journey or whatever through life has been like a ripple effect of sorts, just like a wave. And that's, again, part of the journey of life. But you have a testimony. You have a real testimony. Oh, yeah. And I just want to kind of go over the um, major highs or whatever and the lows or whatever, because in doing that and sharing with us, again, it's kind of like um, people are saying, you get inspiration, okay? And it's not like you're like, ooh, Lord, well, I can make it. If they make it through that, I can make it. No, it's inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. To show people that you can go through hardships or whatever and eventually get back up, put yourself in the game and live. You know what I'm saying? And not only live, not only survive, but thrive. So 
I want to go and uh, kind of take that journey with you, like one of the first things or whatever that kind of got, you know, that first kind of gut punch or whatever you got that you had to, you know, basically find God or whatever to get back up, get yourself back on track. Yeah, so that would be hmm, 2000 and is it 2015? Would that be seven years ago? Mm, don't ask yeah, me to so do that. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, around that time, um, yeah, January 2015. So, the year prior, I was engaged to be married. Um, you know, I was doing so much, and I really felt like everything I had been through in life, you know, God was just giving me everything that, you know, I don't know. I deserved. Um, music was going well. I was getting ready to go on a really big tour with the Franchise Boys um, through K. Chill Harris. He's a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he was the promoter at that time with Chills on Entertainment. And um, I was in love. You know, I was ready to have some babies, make my mama really <laughs> proud. <laughs> I was all you know the grandbabies, so yes, yes. Yeah, yes. And, um, uh, she had a uh, cancer and I was not aware of that. Um, uh, none of us were the family, none of us were aware. And, um, you know, I, I just remember it was like right around Thanksgiving. She started getting sick, like just the cold we thought. And then she wasn't leaving the bed. Um, when we finally took her to the hospital, they said it was pneumonia. Oh, um, or, really? And then we took her to another hospital in uh, Lake Charles, um, and I, I can't remember which one, but make a very long story short, she ended up there for some time. Mm -hmm. um, my birthday is December 30th, uh, the day before New Year's Eve, and I just remember calling, I was just like, you know, do, do you want me to go out? Do you... You know, because there was riffraff with the family, so I couldn't really come to the hospital at certain times. She was like, yeah, I want you to have a good time. And um, I did I, the best I could. And January came, and um, I, I found out she passed away. And I just remember, I just remember being at a, a friend's house and um, not being, I, I just remember a Running outside, it was cold, and I remember, uh, you know, just not being in a good place for a long time. And I just remember that day. And for a long time, I just, I wasn't well. I, I left a, a deal, you know, something I worked for my whole life just to be mainstream and present my music on a mainstream platform and inspire people in that way. So I thought, mm -hmm. but that wasn't plan, I guess. Right. And um, my sister, Monique, uh, she took me in because uh, after a while I had blew all the money that I had made. Of course. Uh, you know, the little. Absolutely. You know, just that was probably part of your healing or whatever. Too. You're like, you know what? Forget this, dude. Let's just go ahead. Yeah, and just trying to call. Now, let me ask yeah, you something. Let me in. ask you something. Was she uh, aware that she was sick and didn't tell the family? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That and it was so interesting because she was one of the most healthiest people out of all of us. So I, you know. I just said the whole thing about my friend David. He was like always oh, yeah, so He was animated. Arm. He was just like vibrant. He was one of the most active people you have ever had. He was always on stage, you know, doing all this stuff. He was on a, I don't know how many city tour that had just started. Never in a million years. You know, never in a million years. But that's the other thing. It's like some people in order to not bear a burden, I guess you would say, on their family, they uh -huh. internalize it and walk that walk or whatever by themselves because they don't want to hurt their family. On the other side, the family always feels like, well, you should have trusted me enough. You didn't allow me to be there for you. You know what I'm saying? So yes. you took something away from me because you didn't allow me to step up or whatever, and maybe we could have rallied around you and made something happen and turned the course or whatever the situation, but there is no right or wrong way. You know what I'm saying? And her heart, she was trying to save you guys. 
And according to you yeah. guys, you're like, I wanted to help save you, you know? So on one side, it's very commendable that she did that. But on the other side, you guys are probably like, you, you, you stole that from us, you know, that time or whatever. So... Well, you know, healing comes from that, and you you come to peace yeah. after time. You never get over, but you do come to peace, and you come to that realization, like you said. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, when were you actually able to cope? I mean, were you able to even stay in Lake Charles because you said you know there's some family stuff going on? Oh no, absolutely. So you was not. out. So I traveled. I traveled for some time. Like I, I could know that was not possible at all. I traveled for time and then after like I said blowing all the money I moved in with my sister and um after being with her a year you know and her just being so patient with me uh dealing with that trauma and I don't just mean self-medicating I mean even sober oh goodness no, I, I was know. amazing I can't well I can't I can't mm-hmm. even imagine I mean that's just like that's um I mean, and uh, and maybe this is me being cray cray, but a lot of times when people are really, really, really connected, the other partner or whatever goes through something, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if they're really, really mature, I will say they don't last very long. And I'm just using, you know, the queen or whatever, as an example, she had just lost her husband. She and her husband had been together since they were children. You know what I'm saying? So, which I gotta, don't, don't play like that or whatever with the royal family, because there is some children stuff going on, but I didn't mean it like that. Oh, no, I, just feel that. Like I mean, one of my favorite you know singers, I mean? Ali, you know, when she passed away, I mean, her, what was it, her father not too long after, just that connection, things like that happen Exactly. Yeah. And so, and you know, for me, mm-hmm. I lived, I tried to live my life for a long time, like I was still engaged to be married. So for a few years, three to be exact, like I did not date when I still wore my ring and you know it it was just a mental thing and so I think now with the new uh, talk show web series I have on the U42 network the RT show um, it promotes mental health awareness uh, because of the practices that I've used over time um, mindfulness and prayer and meditation and Mm -hmm. you know um, being aware it's helped me and so I try to get those stories from others I try to help other people in that way and um well you got like you said you got a testimony so it takes one to know one or whatever so speaking from personal experience absolutely i mean again life happens that's one of my favorite phrases like you know there's certain things or whatever if you don't have the right unit or whatever like your sister was there for you or whatever it's it's hard now let me ask you something and then i will just you know move on for that but how long ago was that that she passed so that was 2015. Oh, so that was mm-hmm. 2000. Okay, I thought maybe it started in 2015, but she passed much later on. No, we were engaged in 2014, and we had, we had dated for three years prior to that, and we had been friends oh, for years oh. before. Oh, yeah, so, so I, I know yeah. it was. Yeah, there was a serious connection there, again. So condolences to you on that but we are here (laughs) we are here we have made it into another phase another part of our journey so from like late charles you're traveling you're trying to get your music thing back on track so what are you like between Mm -hmm. cities and all that stuff or did you go straight to atlanta i I, I traveled and when i say i traveled and i went through money like boy you can go through money in a couple months here i was back in atlanta Alan Iverson, and, um, and, um, love yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so I did a little bit of TV. I was on Bossa Fresh Cut, uh, that was on We TV. And so, um, what was the judges? Uh, Zanique, uh, T.I. and Tiny's daughter from the OMG Girls. She was one of my judges. Uh, Candy Burris. Well, no, she wasn't my judge. She was the judge on the show. I didn't make it to the finale. But the point I was trying to get to is that was my way of getting back into music. And then from there, my bookings picked up. I put out some records. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, life happened again. How to Dominique be saying life be life. And, yeah, life happened again. Okay. And um, But, you know, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And I think that's what I've been, you know, uh, promoting. Um, I know a couple of years back, around early July, I was coming back again. Another plan of my own, coming back to Atlanta from South Carolina, because that's where I was staying mm-hmm. for some time. Mm-hmm. Um, new song, new job, coming back to the radio station, and I was excited, and there was this um, driver on the road, on the highway, on my way back, who uh, was 
trying to get by. You know how you have those angry drivers that are behind you and they feel like you're driving too slow all the and time. they stay up in Los Angeles so all good. the time. Yeah. Yeah, there's this big, big, you know, those big trucks in, in front of me and there's this little space and he curves from behind me, gets in a lane next to me, curves in front of me. I hit the brakes and my car, I had a blue Honda Civic. It, I just feel it turning slowly off of the road and uh i can't tell you exactly how it happened i just know that Hi. three eyewitnesses saw and i remember the car flipping four times and uh i went into a tree and uh but i but i, but I, I want to tell you the testimony about it all and it flipped in my hands never left the wheel and i just remember saying jesus jesus the blood of Jesus and biting my tongue and the fourth time, Jesus, and the car rocking and stopping and just shaking and I'm just Jesus, you know? So and I'm shaking. Conscious? Oh yeah, the whole time. Hand on the wheel. Cause I just, I was like, Lord, I can't let this wheel go. I, that's all I could think, you know? And I just remember the car stopping, but like teetering. So I felt like I just had to stay still. But and, sometimes that's uh, like what it is. Like, God blocks it, and you're just like, after it yes, happens, yes. you're just like, okay, what the hell? What, what, what just happened? And it takes those eyewitnesses to let you know. But you were very, you never, like, went out of contact yeah. or anything. And that's, all I could, that's all I could get out. Those were the only words I remember. As you um, roll three or four through. times, you're saying, Jesus, Jesus, mm -hmm. with your hands on the wheel. Yeah. 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 And car going in the... Because you got to remember when I'm explaining it quickly, but a car like coming from behind you, it has to be at an accelerator. Oh, right? absolutely. And, then and you got a Civic. I mean, it's not a big car. You said yeah. this was a big truck, right? Yeah. So. Oh, my gosh. That happened. There was a, I, I remember hearing a gentleman saying, um, he's alive. Um, I'm coming to you. Uh, it was the guy that was in the truck, some truck, one of those big trailer tractor trucks, some guy pulled over. And there was a Caucasian woman. I remember saying, oh, my God, he's alive. He's alive. She was on the phone calling the police. Oh. I remember he uh, opened the door. He opened the door, the African-American gentleman, and he said, uh, uh, sir, are you OK? I was like, yeah. And uh, I was looking around and he was like, I was like, because uh, his eyes were shocked. Like he looked yeah. like this. And I was like. Oh, no. So I'm shaking. I'm panicking. I'm thinking I'm bleeding. He's like, no, no, no. You okay. Nothing's wrong. I'm touching you. I was like, you okay. He helped me out. And uh, they were like, he's walking. I had no cuts. Maybe on my foot. Maybe on my toe. But when I say no cuts, no concussion, no, no, no when the, who is it, paramedics, whoever, when they came and they checked my heart rate, they were asking me, was someone else in the car? Were you in the car? You know, they were talking to me because I was coherent. They were asking me in my dress, stuff like that. They ju they were just like, like you were in that car. Like, it doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, the they're car. looking at the wreckage. And they're looking at you just yeah, like the car went through. The car went through a, a tree as as well, not through it, but like it crashed into a tree. So they're looking like, are you serious right now? Oh yeah, and I keep receiving. So wait, let me this. ask you this. What about the guy that cut you off? Did he hit and run or did he stay? Don't know? No. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask you. People like that or whatever, you just like, ah, to forgive, you're never going to forget. You know what I'm saying? But in order for you to next time go to the next chapter, I wonder if it's new or if it's different because I didn't actually know him or I don't know because, yeah, I I was able to get over that just because I had my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, I know somebody was praying for me. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. But in order for you to heal from that, there was something that you had to do to face it, compartmentalize oh, yeah, it in order to put it aside. I was leaving from South Carolina to come back to Atlanta to get my career back started. Like, I'm back at an FM station. I'm back, you know, in charge. Like, lyrics back, putting music out. People are wanting to book lyric right, again. Right, right. Uh, so your, you know, face, your, your whole was thing going. was otherwise, like, okay, bumping the road. All right, next. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, yeah, but there was so much loss. 
you know, and so much on pause and so much that had to recover. But, you know, like I say, with the mindfulness and with the prayer and with the meditation and with the just being present and not worrying, I think we stress so much as people oh. about the future. Yeah. You ain't telling you nobody because I know there are times or whatever when I'm just like, okay, girl, calm down, calm down. So let me ask you this. Whenever you are, quote, okay. meditating, everybody does this very differently. What exactly are you doing? Are you doing some form of yoga? Are you doing like, what is your form of I hope you got into yoga yet. Um, Lauren, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm going to be taking some classes with her soon. I'm hoping to get into that, but I haven't done yoga. Generally, I'm just getting to myself you know, in a quiet space and just clearing my mind. I know it's easier said than done because I'm not a pro at this. Um, but I will say that sometimes soothing meditation music helps me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for people that aren't in a tax bracket to be paying to go get trained on this, you can simply go to YouTube and type in affirmation uh, music and it's someone speaking to you, just like it would be if you were to go pay for it, you know, and um, those type of things help. And it really just calms you because we can be so stressed out about the future. I know I've been stressed out about the future for a very long time because of traumas of the past. And so through meditation and mindfulness and, you know, the things that I do um, to heal or the fast that I take, which isn't always through food. Sometimes I fast from social media. Sometimes I fast. Oh God. From, yeah. Food, yeah. Or, you know, things like that. I, I practice those things and it helps, you know, it gets you out the way and, you know, exactly. Well, as my husband always calls it YouTube university, you know what I'm saying? I mean, as long as you are Not university. <laughs> YouTube university, as long as you are diligent, you know what about it? And I mean, is this something you do on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's how yeah. you start your day, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can set your day. You know, I feel like I have met myself through that. Yeah. You know, the you know how sometimes right before something great happens or even if it seems like it's not happening, it comes through. But you can always go back and say, but I visualize that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I saw it like that. And it may happen a little differently, but you saw it. You know, and Lisa Left Eye Lopez, God rest her soul, one of the most powerful things she's ever said that I carry with me every day is if um, you can think it, it's a possibility. But if you can see it, it's already happened. And you just have to kind of meet that person yeah, and meet that level and just walk in it. And I tell you, every day being able to live my dream. Yeah. Because I'm meeting with that higher self is a beautiful thing. And I want to give back to people in that way. And I can mm -hmm. see very well your connection with people. And when you're on stage, you're like a whole other person. Like I saw you. Oh, yeah. I, I don't even be there sometimes. Yeah, I don't know how to. You're going through your Instagram or whatever. Like, what? Okay, look at him. Like your performance. <laughs> Why can't you just get up on here and be like, what? like it's like a um outer body experience i guess you would say you know it's exactly. like you're there but you're not there you know what i'm saying so i can see like your love and your passion is definitely left on that stage i mean so what inspires you i mean do you write your own original music do you work with a composer what do you do when you go into that sound you know booth what is how does this whole process work for you you know, I said at the top of this year, I wanted to finally work with other writers because I feel like there's power in numbers if you're trying to accomplish certain goals. But not just that, I'm always open to learning new things from everybody. People don't even understand how I pull from everyone. Every conversation I have, I feel like there's a message in it. And I'm not searching for it, but I always find it. Uh -huh. You know, well, you're intuitive. Um, you're open. You know. You're open. That's what they always say, especially us as actors. Be present. And like sometimes it looks yeah. like, girl, why? How you did? 
It's like you just feeding off of the person across from you. I mean, it sounds easy or whatever, but after you've done it a while or whatever, that's all you're doing. Like you're reacting truthfully and honestly to the person that's across from you. So as you, as a musician, you're having an honest conversation and there's something that makes you react or whatever that you internalize that then comes out in your music. Yeah. Which is part of yeah. the healing, which is part of the healing process. I was just going to get to that. And I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know which one I love more because I feel like being on stage is wonderful just because of what you were saying, that reception and because there's something inside just wanted to cry out and I feel when it does that's what the blackout moment is yeah. and so sometimes I walk off stage and I'll be like what happened you know, I know I know I, I, I y'all look pleased but I hope I didn't and then I watch it back like okay <laughs> when I was in the recording studio that's one of the only places on earth I've ever felt safe yeah. I just feel like when I go there, like I may do a lot of things wrong. I may not always be politically correct. You know, I may not look as good as the filter that I use on Snapchat. <laughs> I tell you this, you cannot tell me when I get in that studio, I do that wrong. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's what it's, it's it, you know that's thing. it. That's your comfort zone. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, that is so fascinating. I mean, when you find your passion, you know what I'm saying? It just puts your soul and your spirit at, at peace because, again, there's so many people out here or whatever who may not have discovered that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a real good blessing. I mean, because, again, you got lots of folks that are quitting their jobs, but a lot of times when they quit their job, they don't know what the next phase is. Like, they really and truly have no idea. They know it's not this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They know whatever they're doing right now, it, this ain't it, Okay. But they yeah. don't necessarily know what that next part of the chapter is. So there's such a comfort in knowing that you found your passion. Mm -hmm. Now we can evolve within that passion. You know what I'm saying? Right. Once we get in there, there's different. When you are creative, there's so many different places or whatever that you can be. And only like for me, until you're on set, do you start realizing what all the mechanical pieces are or whatever that help to make this thing come to fruition. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's other things you kind of look at like, hmm, that look a little interesting right there. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's so cool about it. I mean, you, I mean, you might want to do sound engineering. You might, you know, no one knows, you know what I'm saying? But you know that you belong in music. Not only that, not only that, I hate to cut you off, but even in that, what I, what I find is, you know, healing through the process of your career, not just diving into new things. You'll find that like a lot of, um, gifts that you forgot about start to come out, you know? And so my mother, she gave me, um, when well I gave me, she gave back. I got my own place and uh, she gave me back some things that I had in her garage storage, just miscellaneous box of things that I've had from high school or just throughout the uh -huh. years. I was looking through these tapes and um, <laughs> there were some middle school tapes and uh, elementary tapes of me on the school news reporting and, you know, I'm up here going through life thinking, uh, oh, that lady from the radio station, she just liked my voice and told me I had a nice radio voice and this fell in my lap. Like, no, you've been doing this, you know, and now you're, those things are coming back out. And so I just encourage everybody to heal and live positive and speak positive, you know, and um, you'll start to see things unravel as time evolves yeah. and you process and like you were saying when you do find your passion it's the gift because i always say if i die with a microphone in my hand i died happy amen <laughs> can i ask you lyric um do you have the microphone close by because you're going to give us a sample of something like what's up with the microphone and huh why, would I do why did i do that i was just trying to get it. <laughs> Liz, that's what I do. It is. I've been watching you. I was watching you with the twins to do this. Well, you know, that's not a problem. I mean, they did not call me Lyric, but don't worry. Well, I was yeah, I do have this. Do you want on. to make your big announcement now, or do you want to give us a little sample of something? Yeah, I can give you a sample. Huh? I can give you a sample. I can give you a sample. So the record, it's called, um, it's really called L-O-V-E, but it's called Love. And uh, I'm bringing that out at the top of next month. It's going to be streaming off my music platform. We're 
gotta promote love. Okay, I was, I was gonna promote love. You say it again. Woo! Okay, now you talk. Oh no, nah, I heard you. <laughs> you heard no, we gotta promote love. They may not have heard you, so give me that again. Yeah, top of next month, you guys, we're releasing my new single with called Love, and we are celebrating love. It's a pop. It's a real crunk, crunk record, but um, it's all me. We put little to no editing on my vocals because I also believe we need to get back to the authentic singing. No other <laughs> tunes. No other tunes. No so tunes at all. Up in there with you? No, no. Mucho dinero. He engineered the project, but um, Inso Beats, they produced it. Yeah. Nice. Oh my God. Well, congratulations. So that means October 1st, or is another date within the top? Um, October 3rd, actually, it'll be streaming everywhere. October 1st, you can, you know, pre order. Yay! Oh my God, what a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. So, after all this stuff, here you are getting back in the game. Not only are you performing, but you're also releasing your own music. Yes, yes. How amazing. And I love this record. I love this record because love is what we all need. That is the one force in this universe that we you know, all can connect on. And I feel like if we had more love in this world, there's a lot of senseless things that's going on that's had happened this week and any other week that would not be going on. And so we got to promote love because it's so powerful. God is love. We are love. We Listen, even those of us that didn't plan to be here, or our parents didn't plan for us to be here, it was some form of love going on to get us here. Amen. You have to do something. There ain't no, no immaculate conceptions I know of. Right nah, but nobody, yeah. nobody is here by mistake. And so I want to promote that love, you know. And I, I really hope you love the record. I wanted to send it to you, but I didn't want to change up your set today. No, I love the song. It's, okay. it's totally cool. Yeah. But I mean, do you have it to where we can hear a little bit of it? Or you want to go ahead and freestyle on the microphone? What you want to do? I want you, baby, and no one else will do. And if you say you're ready for love, then baby, I can show you. I'll give you L-O-B-E, baby. Have you an L-O-B-E, baby? I want you, baby. I do. I told you 
I'm going to cut up for her. <laughs> you already doing it, fam. That is Thank amazing. You. you, oh my God, you have so much more to give. This is just the beginning for you. This is just Thank the beginning you. for you. And I'm so honored that you wanted to be with us, share yourself, share your journey, we share your challenge. Absolutely. Yes. With the queen. And let me tell you, I hope Imani ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you know, you got to understand. I like seeing you everywhere. I do. I do. I, I, I like seeing, I like laughing with you on one network. <laughs> and then I like seeing you, you know, you can't go through be something. Miss Fox. It's like she's bipolar. It's just like, okay, what's going to happen next? I have no idea. Oh my God, I'm like, All right, next you so the next, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, I love that I can see you everywhere. Aww. You know what I'm saying? And I really do hope that, real quickly, I know we were talking about the music, but. Again, I had to bring this up. The RT Show. It is my new talk show web series where we promote Black-owned businesses, Black entrepreneurship, mental health awareness. And um, when I say everything in the world of entertainment, generally it's entertainers that come on, so they got something they're promoting. <laughs> but um, I love that everybody comes on. We've had Patrick Dallas from Candy and the Game. And um, I just interviewed Dr. Heavenly and a couple of people from uh, Married to Medicine, Dr. Simone. She has the skincare line. You were talking about my skin, and I have to be honest. When I met her, she said my that was the first thing she said to me. She was like, you have really nice skin. Gorgeous. But I've been using her cream, and Jesus, really? like, okay, yeah, so I is that something through. I need to go head on and pick up, go on Amazon and pick yeah, up? Yeah, Dr. Simone. Dr. Simone Skincare.com. You're not Whoa. spending much of anything. She is a certified OBGYN of 28 years. Right. Outside of the reality television thing. And she gave us a wonderful interview. And I really love the fact that I'm able to inspire people through music, but I can also inspire people through my show because, you know, um, when we talk about the mental health awareness and how they get through being in the world that they're in, yeah. sometimes it helps people. Your regular day-to-day -day man that works at the Circle K or the Taco Bell. You get what I mean? And them giving um, so much information on how they got their businesses started and where they are in life. And just being able to cheer them on directly, you know, along with the people. It's a beautiful thing. So I really hope I can have you on the RT show, even if it's five minutes of your time. You know, right, um, after, that look, after I get this thing movie in the can, honey, I'm open. So just let me know. I'm proud of you. I would Congratulations. Love to, love to be a guest. Thank you. And you said BT Plus. That's not the movie you're doing, but that's... Uh, that's um, I'm doing... Uh, oh, I'm starting to shoot, but the one that just came out about, I don't know, three weeks or so is called The Missing. That's on BET Plus. But apparently it's on BET, so... Yeah, though. No. We'll take it. <laughs> oh, my God, I love it. Okay, well, I can talk to your ass all day, every day, but I gotta go get a damn COVID test, because you know in the world of entertainment, COVID is still very present, so I gotta go get my behind uh, tested three times before I start working. Mm -hmm. No, but you're working, and congratulations. Thank Keep you. Getting this black excellence. I'm getting my seasoning. You're gonna get your seasoning. I'm getting my season in. Don't play you know, because I don't just have to use it. I'm, I'm doing this new thing, you know, now that I got some gig coming up, too. So I'm not really doing a lot of meat. But on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I can do my fish. And so, yeah. And I don't just have to use it for me. So, yeah, yeah. I saw two seasons on the, on the site that I want to get now. Okay, well, you know, hit me up and tell me what you need, babe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. Okay, well, you be great. Keep us posted, Okay. Um, tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram. You got two different, um, what do you call it, names. So tell everybody where they can find you on Instagram. Oh, yeah. You guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lyrical Lyric, L-Y-R-I-C-A-L, L-Y-R-I-C. You can use the hashtag Lyric B to keep up with everything that I got going on. And be sure to follow at the RT underscore show. That is our web series and we got some wonderful guests coming on to promote their black excellence and keep you inspired yeah and i'll be there so i mean that's all you really need so yeah. ah! <laughs> you make me happy <laughs> every time i play it i'm like hoping i'm just like 
Oh, they don't shut me down for using her music. Cause, dude, Charlie Wilson shut me down. Yes, I used to sing. I used to start up. It was too slow anyway, Charlie. But I used to do. Ask me how I'm doing. I'm a less. Yes, living every morning, dude. I used it, and they like completely silenced the uh, silence the whole show. Uh-huh. Yes, I was like, huh? Jeez. Charlie, serious? I was gonna say he got some good. They they find anything. Okay. Well, you're not even posting a Snapchat. Go. I mean, I'm <laughs> saying, but you know, Yonce is allowing me to use her lyric, her uh, her song. So I'm gonna go ahead on and stick with Yonce. Okay. Uncle Charlie, shut yeah, me I'm down. sure she watches. I'm sure she watches you too and gets inspired from <laughs> you. You ask them everything. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Beyonce, like, yeah, she is supporting the Boutte. Beyonce, Boutte, I mean, you from Charlie Louisiana, on. so. Hmm? You don't have Charlie on. That's what I'm saying. Maybe Charlie gonna go ahead and apologize to me one day. Well, I mean, Tina is from Louisiana, Louisiana but by, you know, through her family, she from there. She from St. Martinville, so I'm just letting you know. Oh, hey, Tina, how are you? You guys, congratulations on this. I ain't trying to keep you longer. I really do love Louisiana. Louisiana Wednesday, I love everything that you're doing with Louisiana Girl. I think it was a wonderful idea. Um, and I hope that y'all keep it going, even with you booked. And yeah, I mean, shoot, have her come in when you can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Candy do the, Candy do the same thing with Don Juan. See what I'm saying? Uh, Oprah did it with Gail. You know, um, one of these days, you'll, I, I'll fill in for you. you know, don't play with me. Like, don't put it out there. You ain't, don't play with me. So, anyway. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you for taking time out of your day to just be vulnerable with us and share your journey and just tell us what's on and popping with the next chapter, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome, and thank you. I always said I would talk to people, and I'm glad you gave me the platform to finally do it. Well, thank you. You're thanking me, but I'm thanking you right back. So appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. All right, so dab me up through the screen real Ooh. quick, okay? And then I got to take this quick screenshot just in case you don't save this. My mama want to see this. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Dad, Love man. you, girl. I'm going to talk to y'all later. <laughs> All right, babe. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, too. The queen. We got to talk to the hey. queen. <laughs> Oh, guys, thank you so much for joining me for Louisiana Wednesday's Lyric. You are a the bomb, okay? The bomb. And I tell you what, guys, I do never, I do not ever take that for granted. The fact that folks or whatever, you're going to come on this platform, talk, share, be vulnerable, share their journey, because that's how we learn and that's how we get motivated.